All right, what we have here is some ferrofluid on a normal style rodent coil which is about 12 inches in diameter. Traditional wind, 9 by 9 in a blank spot. What I want to show you here is something I haven't seen on a rodent coil before is watching the ferrofluid interact but actually making it spikes. So here, we'll just turn her on. And as you can see, we got us little itty bitty spikes in there. Nothing to write home about, really. But the thing to really look at is that ribbon layer on the outside of it. And it kind of moves a little bit if you really take a look kind of pulsates and whatnot and let's see if we can get her to move a little bit yeah see there she goes she kind of pumps nothing real super strong there this is right in the center of the coil if we move it around a little bit let's see let's put her on the outside Nothing really there, nothing there. It's all in the center. And it moves around. You can see it pulsating and and whatnot. Kind of shows the vortex pieces, I guess you would call it. The actual field moving. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you this coil next. I'm going to hook it up and show you the difference between that and that. All right, so, so we're, we're right back, back now. Right. And what we got is the Baby Bear coil. Uh, if you're familiar with the videos I've done earlier, this is the fully, fully wound version. It has a couple of layers to it, and it... Uh, and it's a two inches smaller, it's a 10 inch in diameter. And I just kind of wanted to show you the difference of what we got going on. As you can see in the previous one, we had little bitty spikes and whatnot. And here we have much more pronounced type of spikage going on, I guess you would call it. Very cool. The Fluid still moves around in the ribbons. Let's see if we can get her to flow for you. There it goes. Pump, pump, pump. So it definitely has the same rotating magnetic field. Which is kind of what we are all guessing that it has. But we weren't quite sure until now. Because you can actually see it move and pump. So the idea here is we're going to try and use this ferromagnetic substance as a core. And we've seen one video that has this type of deal going on. But the type of wire that he was using was more in the range of this thing right here. Where it was like a network wire. Very, very tiny type wire. Uh, let's see if we can get a better look. So, obviously, you can only have like an amp or two in there. And it's not going to do very much. Versus something like like this right here. This type of 16 gauge wire. Which can take about 22 amps. Now, this doesn't get as nearly as hot as the other coil I had as well. Um, the other coil just kind of, you could feel the heat emanating off of it. Where this one is, I mean, it's still warm to the touch, but it's not like going to be super ridiculous hot. And it still has that rotating magnetic field, and it also has just a lot more power for the power that I'm putting into it. So, pretty much, sorry about the shaky, shakiness of this. But, uh. Just thought I'd like to show you and let your mind kind of get a grip on what's going on in here. 
see if we can get this to move. Well, it still is. You can definitely see it rotating. Let's see if I can get it stable. But yeah, it's definitely rotating, which is very much what we want. We want that very, very much. A rotating, I mean, that's just normal physics. Rotating magnetic field will go ahead and induce wires, and just like a magnet, which this is basically a magnet that just gets hit by an electromagnet and the field that would emanate from it should induce wires or a secondary to gain extra power. So what we're going to do, our plan is, is to actually make one of these little small coils but we're going to go ahead and use the twisted pair wire to do that with. And uh, we'll just fill this sucker up use this type of wire and then I have a solid crystal core wire which is just one copper crystal in the wire that is also 16 gauge which should uh, which has a higher conductivity level they use it in like high high-end audio speakers and uh, once we will just build it like a transformer um, and we'll see what happens but thought I'd let you see what's going on kind of want to start building your coils more powerful so you can do stuff like that. Very important to do things like that. Alright, well, talk to you later. Bye-bye.